all new for 2022, Chrysler brought back the legend Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer for 2022. Today, we're going to find out what it's like. This is the Wagoneer Series 3. What sets this apart from the Grand Wagoneer? Find out today on what it's like. All right, before we get started on the review today, huge thanks to Beaver County Chrysler Dodge and Jeep for making this possible. They have great selection in new and pre-owned vehicles. Check out their inventory in the link below. Also, I want to apologize for my voice. I've been under the weather for the last couple of days, but I promise you it's not COVID. But if you want to say a big a prayer to the man upstairs for me, that'd be great. Now on to the Wagoneer overview story. Believe it or not, Wagoneer could be traced back to 1963 under a different manufacturer than you would think. Kaiser Jeep. Wait a minute. I thought Jeep was produced under Willys Overland. It was until 1953 when Kaiser Motors, the company that made such vehicles as the first mass production fiberglass car. A lot of people think that it's the Chevy Corvette, but they're wrong. The Kaiser Darren was the first fiberglass mass production car, beating the Corvette to market by a month. Anyway, getting back to the Wagoneer story, Kaiser Motors bought Willys Overland in 1953. After the acquisition of Willys Overland, Kaiser changed the name to Willys Motors Incorporated, aka Kaiser Jeep, because they changed their name a lot during this period in time just to simplify things. Okay, let's fast forward to the late 60s where AMC was looking to expand their product line and they were in talks with Kaiser Jeep Corporation. That was their name at that point. AMC and Kaiser finalized the deal in 1970. It's also worth mentioning that the Wagoneer was produced all the way through this time period as well, virtually unchanged. AMC continued to produce the Wagoneer. They kept most of the body lines of the previous Wagoneer and gave it a new front fascia. Thank God, because the Kaiser, in my opinion, was hideous. AMC made the Wagoneer into the icon we remember it to be today. Side note, take a look at this picture. Look at this angle. Doesn't that make you really want one? I'm not even in a big Wagoneer fan and that kind of makes me want one. And then that day came in 1987 after years of red choices or bad choices and financial troubles as well as a bad partnership program with Renault. That is a long story that we're not going to get into in this episode. AMC sold out to Chrysler with Lee Iacocca at the helm. And I swear that guy was always at the right place at the right time, or at least it seemed that way. I just want to recap real quick. What makes were under the AMC umbrella or name so to speak you had the hudson motor car company the nash motor car company rambler kaiser jeep willis and overland honestly it was a very interesting play because chrysler wasn't doing that great in the late 80s and this play is probably one of the biggest contributing factors of why chrysler survived the 80s that and you had your boy Lee Iacocca at the helm, but Wagoneer was phased out in 1991, and it was replaced by Jeep Grand Cherokee ZJ. Okay, back to present day. Let's talk about the exterior styling design of the brand new Wagoneer. Just to put this in perspective of how big this vehicle is, it's the same as a Cadillac Escalade, the longer version, or a Chevy Suburban, or a GM Yukon. But in my opinion, it doesn't look that special on the outside. It's really expensive vehicle and it doesn't look special on the outside. Like if you're not in the know, you probably won't know what it is on the street. Like for example, a new Corvette, it's special. Everybody knows what that is. This looks like a stretched Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now that's not a bad thing, but it's an expensive car. I mean, this is the phase three. So this is below the Grand Wagoneer, but this is the most expensive Wagoneer that you could get. This one was $86,000. Speaking of pricing, here is a price breakdown for Wagoneer models. You have a choice of two wheel drive or four wheel drive, but according to the Jeep site, there isn't a series one Wagoneer. This review isn't really about the Grand Wagoneer, but I've included the Grand Wagoneer if you wanted to compare the two. Uh, the Grand Wagoneer has four trim levels and four-wheel drive is standard. 
And I'm not saying it doesn't look good. It looks good. It just doesn't look as good as $86,000. But I will say that the running boards getting into this vehicle, very easy. I love where everything is placed. And looks are very subjective. Tell me in the comment section, what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's an awesome looking car? Or do you think it's ugly? I personally don't think it's ugly. I just don't think it looks special. It doesn't look like an $86,000 vehicle should look, in, in my opinion. These handles, these door handles, when you open it, the whole handle pulls forward. I don't know if you can see that. That's all right, so let's talk about these door panels. I love the design of them and the layout. Big storage bin at the bottom where you can store stuff, as well as a door cup holder for those big bottles. You gotta stay hydrated. Up from that, you have the leather wrapped armrest with various controls and switches, which we'll get to in a minute. For those of you that don't know, I build rustic furniture for a living and I love the wood grain. It has this rustic-ish feel to it but it doesn't look out of place i love the contrasting colors also the door handle as well as the trim it's more of like a satin or a matte finish it's not chrome it's not like pow in your face it's very subtle and it and it adds to it just to the right of the door handle are three pre-selection buttons that you can set for your seat okay let's talk about these switches at the very top or right as shown are the power mirror controls. Then you have four window switches, which are all one touch auto. And then down from that, you have the window locks. And then down from that, you have the door unlock and the door lock. Question, what is up with all the piano black plastic? Why couldn't they use the rustic gray wood paneling on the top of the door trim instead? Like why is the piano black plastic still a thing? This interior would be perfect if it wasn't for that and there was one more flaw that we'll get to in a minute. Some may say it's an oversight, but lest you forget, people complained when Tesla did it, so I'm eager to see if Jeep gets a pass because they're not Tesla. It scratches easily, it shows fingerprints easily, any dust or dirt you get on it, ah! Oh, it's just, it's so bad, I just don't understand why it's still a thing. Okay, inside the Wagoneer. This isn't the Grand Wagoneer. This is just the regular Wagoneer, uh, stage three. They have different levels, uh, trim levels. But this one, I don't honestly, I've never been in a Grand Wagoneer, but this is pretty spectacular for interior, I would say. And it, and it has to be because it's a pretty expensive vehicle. Um, we, we talked about the prices in the uh, overview, but just look, take a quick look around and it's just, it's an marvelous interior but let's come back here to the gauge cluster i have the vehicle on because it's super cold outside it says it's 33 degrees but it feels like it's in the 20s anyway this is your gauge cluster um here it tells you what direction you're facing uh down here is the engine temperature over here is your rpms and it's pretty cool how it has just a little bit of an arc to it over here you have your gas gauge uh, speedometer clearly in the middle there um, that's pretty cool you got two stocks coming off the steering wheel column you have uh, this stock here that controls all the windshield wipers the front and back the rear wipers are here pull it towards you for the mist front wipers are here over here you have your brights and your turn signals there's your engine push button uh, this thing is so quiet in here that I, I'm assuming they had to put a run button in here to tell you whether or not it's on or not. It's super quiet. You can't hear the engine running at all. You have this big screen and it controls, just like most big screens and new modern cars, it controls just about everything. Every aspect of anything that you'd want. Right now we're in the comfort screen and the screen is uh, showing off red for some reason. It must be like the LEDs inside the screen itself. But let's talk about these, these buttons over here. You have heated seats. You have like different zones you can heat it. Different places that you could put the heat. They're also ventilated. You have a heated steering wheel. And it shows you that it's on the highest setting it could be on. 
you got a volume control here. Okay, so we're not gonna go through all the buttons on the screen, but as you can see, you have the home button in the uh, bottom left corner. Next, you have the media, where you have your AM, FM, radio. You can put music onto a flash drive and then install it into one of the USB ports in the bottom, listen to whatever you wanna listen to on that. Um, it also has Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. Next to the comfort button, you have the navigation button, you have your phone button, you can sync your phone up to it and listen to music off your phone like YouTube, etc. Um, but yeah, the second biggest downfall about this interior is this screen. It's super laggy and I was told that it will get fixed in a software update, but that's just something you need to know that I don't know if it's like that across the board or if it was just like that for this particular Series 3 Wagoneer, but this screen was super laggy. Also, it changed red a lot during filming, which has to do with the camera that I was recording this uh, review with, not the actual screen itself. But it's still highly distracting, that's why I just froze it here for a moment in time. Well, as you have various buttons for that, like this got dual climate control, so you can adjust it from here with the buttons. You can put max, max front defrost, rear defrost, where you want the air to go, fan speed, if you want it on auto AC, circulating AC. You got surround camera. Look how cool that is. That is awesome. I'm trying to get the angle right so it doesn't go all red. I don't know why it's doing that. But man, that looks awesome. You can even see my tripod out here. You see the tripod in various shots. There's different angles that you get for the screen. Like if you want to see the rear, the rear cross view path, or the front, there's a front camera, or front and top view. It's got a camera at the back of the rear too. And you can zoom in or out. Lots of different uh, camera settings, it's really cool. And then just to get out of it, you hit the X. That's really cool. You got a rear view camera. Okay, moving on to um, below the screen and the uh, center control stack. It's finished in a piano high gloss black plastic that gets fingerprints on it very easily. Um, it, you can store your phones and such in there. Open it to reveal a pretty big compartment inside there. Um, underneath, like back up in here, you have behind that flap is a 12 volt cigarette style power port outlet you also have three usb and USB C power port charger and um, there's an auxiliary port between the first two so if you wanted to have an old school mp3 player i don't even know if people even still use mp3 players but you could plug it in through the auxiliary port fun fact there are eight usb power port outlets and usb c's throughout this vehicle. Eight, that's insane. You also have a wireless phone charger in that area as well. All right, let's talk about this chrome knob that protrudes out of the high gloss piano black plastic. This knob is your drive selector. Uh, you have park, reverse, and drive. And then there's these like two little fins that kind of like branch off of it. The fin that is on the left-hand side that controls your drive modes. You have rock, sand mud snow auto and sport the fin on the right hand side controls the ride height adjustment if your wagoneer is equipped with that okay moving back underneath this panel is your cup holders but can you see for a second look at that look at that wood look how variegated it looks and it's all streaked and stuff looks kind of rustic looks kind of cool but not out of place they should have replaced the piano black, black plastic with that. Honestly, just did the whole interior like that because that finish doesn't scratch or leave fingerprints as easily as the piano black plastic, in my opinion. So back from that, just take a look at this center console. It is amazing. It's got leather wrapped armrests on top of it. It opens in two areas. You could slide this one area back and that would reveal... You got a USB and a USB-C power port on the passenger side. There isn't a USB or USB-C on the driver's side, just on the passenger side. This is what your door panel looks like in the rear. You got these nice shades. 
they hook on like that nice privacy shades the door handles in this are very nice they're very very nice material if you look to the right of the door handle you'll see this black finning I don't know how to really describe it but it's it's awesome I think it makes this door panel it gives it more of a texture they also didn't cheap out on the armrest material the same leather that's in the front is in the back but I don't know why they gave the rear passengers the ability to unlock and lock the doors. Because if you have kids, you know that they just like to push those buttons as you're going down the road. So that might have been an oversight. But just look at this interior back here. You got two captain's chairs. You could get a second row console if you want. Uh, this one doesn't have it. Honestly, I don't think that you really need it because it, it hinders getting back to the rear seat also when you fold the seats flat it you know is kind of in the way but it's very well equipped back here you have your own climate controls you have your own power ports you have your own cup holders there are a bunch of different power port options you have in the rear you have the regular 110 outlet that you would find in your home there are also two usb and USB C power ports as well as a 12 volt power port outlet as well while sitting in the back, you'll also find two screens that are mounted to the front seats, to the back of the front seats, and they are controlled by a screen that is on top of the glove box on the passenger side in the front, and you have access to Firefox, Amazon, Firefox TV, as well as I'm sure you could watch other things on it. Definitely useful if you have a, a car full of heathens, I mean kids, on a long journey to, say, Florida from Pennsylvania. Gotta stay occupied. Anyway, you got some nice grab handles. There's a nice map light on both sides. Okay, I'm sitting back here in the third row and the third row has some interesting quirks. Like check out this little vent here. That's pretty cool. You got a nice cup holder. It's kind of a weird, weird shape. You have a nice place to store your phone. A PlayStation, PSP. Game Boy or whatever kids are into these days. You got a USB and a USB-C power port next to it. Worth mentioning, both sides are equal. So if you're sitting on the driver's side, you have the same features as the person sitting on the passenger side. Some manufacturers make it so it's not symmetrical where like the driver's side passenger has more options or auxiliary ports or headphone jacks or something like that in a panel Everything's the same. So cup holders, USB ports, whatever. It's also worth mentioning there's a really cool vent up here by the rear window. The windows in this thing are huge. Because the window size is massive, you don't feel claustrophobic in it. It feels very airy. And visibility is surprisingly really well because of how big the windows are. If you look up, you'll find map lights in the third row, just like the second row. It's also worth mentioning they didn't cheap out on the leather used in the rear seat because a lot of times manufacturers will give a lesser quality material for the third row because they figured the third row doesn't get used as much but i applaud w wagoneer for keeping it all the same but i'm going to scooch over here you're going to see how much room i have with my legs there and i apologize this doesn't give you the best representation of space but this is honestly one of the nicest third rows that i have ever sat in Gives you a lot of space. Also, these seats recline, so that's a really useful feature. Just to clarify on seat material real quick, these aren't ventilated seats, so the material's a little bit different, but it doesn't feel cheap. All right, so getting in the back back here, you can uh, hit this button. There's a button underneath here. Or you can hit the remote twice. And it goes all the way up, unless you there's a button on the side over here that you can program to make it not go all the way up if you don't want it to. So you would just hold this in the position that you would want it to be in. Sorry, rice are going by there. Um, back here you got all kinds of buttons and switches. Um, there's a power port right here, 12 volt style. Back here you can release all the seats to go down, which is a really useful feature. So you just push it once and they will all go down flat. You can also release the second row. I already released um, the other one up there. 
The third row can be released and raised by a push of the button. The um, second row can only be released by a button. You have to put it up manually. I just wanted to freeze this real quick to show you if you had the center console in the in the rear and all the seats were folded down and say you had to bring home drywall or like a sheet of plywood or something and this was your truck, this was what you're using as a truck, the center console might get in the way. So that's something to consider if you're planning on buying this for a work vehicle. You got a nice storage space here, which has your owner's manual in it, some various other accessories. Underneath this is your, your jack for changing your tire, various other things that you need to operate the jack slash get the, um, get the wheel off, like a tire iron there. So let's talk about this key. This is the key that you get with the wagon here. Such a nice key. Key fob, you got unlock, lock, two times, you hit this two times to start it. Two times for trunk, pan it. There is a small button on the side of the key fob. When pressed, it releases the key for the glove box. Your hood release is down here, where it should be. Release is nice and easy. When you open the hood, you see this marvelous engine compartment, but you also see this Wagoneer plaque, born in America. It looks awesome. And um, the only thing that really separates the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer in the big scheme of things, they share the same body, um, virtually the same sort of interior-esque, like the dashboards is the same. You get different wood trim, you get different, you get more premium quality, like leather and stuff, but... 5.7 liter engine in the Wagoneer. It produces 392 horsepower, 404 foot-pounds of torque. Whereas if you got the Grand Wagoneer, you got the 6.4, produces 471 horsepower. So you get 66 horsepower more, 455 foot-pounds of torque. They both are mated to a eight-speed automatic transmission. The uh, Wagoneer is rated to pull 10,000 pounds, which is a really good pulling capacity for any vehicle. I love, I love how it, it has a projection of heads up display. Yeah, heads up display. It tells you what the speed limit is, but it won't project on the uh, it won't project on the screen for the video to see for some reason. It's a very cushy ride in this. Like, um, I don't know, like. When you walk up to this thing, it doesn't look all that special, but it, it definitely feels special inside. Correct. Like, this is a brand new uh, all-wheel drive system. Yeah. Quadra drive, so it's all independent on each wheel. No way. That's why it's so smooth. Like, you're gonna laugh, but like any, like, I've owned 30 vehicles in my, in my, in my lifetime, and the, the most, the, the most plushiest car that I ever owned was the 88 Lincoln. Like, I never drove anything modern that felt as cushy as that except this. Yeah. <laughs> this, this. This feels so, like... We're bringing back the boat feel. Yeah, it, feel, <laughs> it feels like that. Yep. Like, this road sucks in every other car, but this road is so nice in this. I've been driving it. Obviously, I put 176 miles on it. Oh, wow. When I got on the road there, like, we're going... We're going 57, it doesn't feel like we're moving now. <laughs> that car and this feel identical. Like, I never drove anything from the modern era that, that felt like that. But, um, yeah, this, this is nice. I, I can't get over how well this rides. Like, it does not feel like you're driving an SUV. It feels like you're driving, like, a 1979 Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, like your float. Yeah, it's incredible. Now everybody's talking about the wagon, the Grand Wagoneer, not the Wagoneer. But this, this I think for your, the, I think this gives you the best bang for your yeah. buck. Really, I mean, you don't really need this screen that's down here. You have the side screen, which yeah. I thought that's what you got with the Grand yeah. Wagoneer and the wireless charger. Yeah, you got all these USBs. I counted eight USBs and USB-C charging ports, which is a lot. <laughs> just... Kids have so many devices now. 
Yeah. <laughs> These heated seats are amazing, and I saw it has ventilated seats. Does that have ventilated seats for the rear? Should, yeah. Nice. And the, the third row, they didn't cheap out with the third row. It's, it's nice back there, too. It's very easy to get back there. That's and, what's nice about the wagon here. We had probably three or four customers order this one because it doesn't come with the console in them. Yeah. So it's more of a pain in the butt. That grand wagon here has the full console with this. Right, in the center. center. Yeah. And the other cool thing is, is you could lift the third row without physically lifting it. Whereas if you got like a Chevy Suburban, you have to physically lift it every time. I'm not I'm not too up on the the new Escalades or the Navigators, um, but I, I really want to review like a Lincoln Corsair or the um, the Aviator. The Aviator the Aviator for me yeah. is like the perfect mix of everything. Mm -hmm. They because Lincoln I have one college. Lincoln I don't know I don't know what Lincoln's been doing the last thirty years, but like they just. I don't know, they're in a hole somewhere. And then they designed this aviator and it's like proportionally correct everywhere you look at it. And it's just, it's awesome. They did a great job with them. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I honestly didn't get this car. Like, like looking at it, it, it doesn't look special from the outside. They're asking a fortune for it. And like, but then when you get inside, it's, it's all about this interior. This interior is awesome. There's no shortcomings on this interior that I can think of, other than the screen's a little bit laggy. And the high gloss piano black plastic trim. Just just a smidge. If they could figure out the quirks with the screen, it would be perfect. There'll be a software update soon with it. That's that brand new 10 inch screen that they just came out with. I just can't get over it. I can't get over how, how nice the ride is. I love it. It's so nice. So if you guys made it to the end, th this is my final thoughts. This is what I think of the Wagoneer. I didn't do a review on the Grand Wagoneer, so I can only speak for the Wagoneer, but if you could get past the exterior not being special, this is a really incredible package. The interior, there's only two shortcomings. One will be fixed with a software update. The other one, if you can find some sort of clear material to put over top of it so it doesn't get fingerprints or crumbs or scratched anywhere the crumbs are the biggest one if you have any hair stray hairs or crumbs it shows up like um like specks and it's very distracting but if you could get past that the interior is a very great place to be everything feels premium quality the steering wheel feels amazing the seats were so comfortable and honestly the ride is what really blew me away because I was always like a personal luxury kind of car guy when I was growing up as a kid. I've never driven a new car that is even remarkably close to like an 88 Lincoln Town Car. Not saying an 88 Lincoln Town Car is a personal luxury car, but to me it was. I, I just, I, that's what I drove. But it's like riding on a cloud. You can't feel anything you're so isolated in this car there you don't hear no engine noise you don't hear any tire noise you don't hear any road noise and that's huge coming from a like pretty much a jeep brand you know you don't think of jeep jeep you hear everything this is so isolated you don't hear any of that and it, it's just incredible because i i've never experienced that the last point i want to make where this differs from the lincoln of my early driving years this doesn't feel nearly as big as it is it almost feels like you're driving a early 2000s honda odyssey minivan size wise not driving experience wise and who knows it could be just me i'm used to driving a 52 chevy one ton truck every day thank you guys so much for watching that's what i thought that's what it was like um please like share and subscribe if you dig what i do till next time